All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve a Berkeley prelim problem, which is usually the exam given to first year grad students at UC Berkeley. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for the challenge? All right, let's go. So let's do some analysis. So suppose F from RK to R is a function that satisfies the following properties. And by the way, here it's with their usual metrics, and I think you can also replace r by r to the n and still get the same result. So it satisfies the following. So for any set k, k, if the set is compact, meaning just closed and bounded, k compact implies that the image is also compact. So the image of a closed and bounded set is closed and bounded. And moreover, suppose you have a nested and decreasing sequence of compact sets. So for any nested decreasing sequence of compact sets, Sets. Again, K1 included, includes K2, includes K3, dot, dot, dot. So kind of a babushka or Russian doll situation going on. So that's K1, then it includes K2, dot, dot, dot. Okay. And suppose we have the following very interesting property. So F of the intersection of uh, the KNs, equals to the intersection of the f of kn. In other words, what is that saying? It says that, suppose, let's say, those sets intersect at a single point, at a small set, okay. then what this means is taking f of the very small set, it's the same thing as taking f of all those sets and then taking their intersection. So, in other words, what this is kind of saying is that f of a small set is a pretty small set. And so that really smells like continuity. And in fact, let's show that. Show that f is continuous. So, show. f is continuous. All right, and we'll do this by steps, and it's actually super interesting because it uses all those properties in a very subtle way. Now, step one. And by the way, well, what do we have to show? Well, we have to show it's continuous at x naught for every x naught. So fix x naught and let the epsilon be given. And what we want to do, we want to find delta such that for all x, if the distance between x and x naught is less than delta, then the if we want absolute value in this case of f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. Really, we, we don't need uh, um, absolute value. Any uh, The usual distance metric on Rn would also work. Now, step one. Well, we would like to use a second property somehow, so let's come up with very interesting compact sets. In particular, let Kn to just be the closed ball centered at zero and radius one over n. So this is x naught, this is the radius one over n, and Kn is just this whole ball. Well, it is closed because it's a closed ball, and it is bounded because it's a ball, therefore uh, it is compact. Because in our case, compact is the same as closed and bounded. So it's compact. And moreover, notice the radius is getting smaller and smaller as n is getting bigger and bigger. So in fact, the kn is are decreasing. 
So we have a nested decreasing sequence of compact sets. Therefore, we can use two. So by two, I know already, I know it shocked me as well. So we know that f of the intersection of kn, so n from one to infinity of kn, is just the intersection of f of kn. All right, now, what is the intersection of Kn? Well, it's essentially the closed ball centered at x0 and radius 0, so it's just a point x0. So the intersection of f of Kn, no, the f of the other way. Uh, well, actually, no, why not? Uh, the intersection of f of Kn, it's f of the intersection of n from 1 to infinity of uh, kn, well, it's f at the point x0, so it's f of the one element set, so it's just a set containing uh, f of x0, because we need a set. It's kind of the analog of a one-hit wonder, a uh, one element set that's very special. All right, that's very good. We will need this in just a second. Now, mm, that was the input. And now consider the output. So consider step two. So let B just be the ball, if you want, centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon. Now in R, in R it just becomes much easier, it's just an open interval x naught minus epsilon f of x naught plus epsilon. Well, again, we, we don't even need this. And consider the following thing. So we have f of kn, okay, which might look, again, just to summarize, kn was a closed ball. If you apply f to it, you get some weird blobby set. And what we want to do, we want to consider this set but without the ball b. So that's x0, and just remove the ball centered at x0 and radius epsilon. So this is b, and we want to consider the following. This weird blob thingy. So this is, again, f of kn, but without the ball. So consider now, again, f of kn without the ball. Well, on the one hand, let's look at the intersection. And that's why we need step one. So on the one hand, the intersection from n from 1 to infinity of f of kn without b, well, it's just the same thing as taking the intersection of f of kn and then removing b. And here's why. That is the same thing as the intersection from n from 1 to infinity of f of kn intersect b complement. So that's the definition of difference. And well, since this doesn't depend on n, we can just take it out of the intersection. So it's this thing, f of kn. And again, without b complement. And that's the same thing as taking, again, the intersection from 1 to infinity of f of kn and then without b. All right, on the other hand, I mean, not on the other hand, but remember by step one, we know this is a one element set. So this is the set of point f of x naught without b, that's step one. However, remember b, sorry, that is my center at f of x naught, okay. Now, that ball b, well, it contains f of x naught. 
So if you're removing this, you're removing the only element here from uh, the set, so in fact this is the empty set. So we know that this is the empty set. On the other hand, so we know that the intersection of all of those are um, empty, and what I'm claiming actually is that one of those sets must be empty. So claim from step three, that's our on the other hand. we have that f of k capital N minus b is empty for some capital N. So we know that um, the intersection itself is empty, but I'm claiming something stronger. I'm claiming one of those sets must be empty. And here's why, so if not, What's the opposite of this? It means that every set is non empty. However, there's something really special about those sets. Well, they're also nested, compact, and decreasing. So, however, how, however, however, <laughs> So f of, we, since kn is compact, because we never use the first condition, uh, we actually get that f of kn is compact. And therefore, well, that set, this f of kn without b, that is f of kn intersect the complement, well, this is compact. Well, and this is closed. And um, it's closed because B is open. B is the open ball, so B complement is the closed ball. So what do we get? We have a closed subset of a compact set, so itself it's compact. So F of Kn minus b is compact. And moreover, there's something quite interesting. Remember the kn's, they're decreasing. So in particular, f of kn should also be decreasing because you're just taking f of smaller and smaller sets. And well, if you're just removing a fixed set, that should still be decreasing. Like this huge blob minus this is bigger than the smaller blob minus this. So what we have, we have f of kn without b is decreasing, so nested and decreasing. And therefore, so what do we have? We have that, again, just to summarize, f of kn without b is a nested, a nested decreasing uh, um, family of non-empty, again by assumption, and compact sets. Now, you're tempted to apply two, as I was trying to do at first, but no, because here we're already in the output set. You know, we can't just apply f again. That wouldn't make sense. However, remember, because we're in rk or in r, um, we do have this nice property called the, I, I like to call it the finite intersection property, but apparently the term is the Cantor uh, intersection theorem, which simply says that the Literally, the intersection of a nested decreasing family of compact sets is not empty. So, for instance, if you have, in this case, like decreasing intervals that are compact and decreasing uh, and non-empty, then the intersection is non-empty. So, by the Cantor intersection theorem, and a video on this is on my uh, playlist, um, theorem, we get that the intersection 
from n from 1 to infinity of those sets, f of kn minus p is non-empty. But we have just shown before that it is empty, so it's a contradiction. Okay, very good. And now step either three or four. Let's see. assume it's step four. Oh, no. So what do we have? Remember, what does it contradict? It contradicts that all of them are non are non empty. So one of them has to be empty. So uh, we know that f of k capital n without b is empty. And I'm claiming that basically it might be obvious or not, but if you're taking f of k n and you're removing all of b and you get the empty set, the only way it can happen is if, is if f of kn is included in b. So that implies f of kn is included in b, and well, if not, what does that mean? It means that there is x in b, but or in other words, no, um, no, there is x in f of kn with x is not in b, but then literally that, in, that uh, um, implies this is not empty. But then so x is in f of kn and x is in b complement, so x is in f of kn intersect b complement, which is f of kn um, without b. All right, and now I'm claiming this concludes basically our proof. So now claim no, in other words, what I, yeah, claim um, what I want to show is that this implies that if the distance between x and x naught is less than 1 over n, then the distance between f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon, but it almost follows from the definition because if the distance between x and x naught is less than 1 over n, then for sure it's less than or equal to 1 over n, which means that x is in the ball centered at x naught and radius 1 over n, closure, and that, that's by definition kn. And so by definition f of x is in f of kn, f of kn, but that's included in b, so f of x is in b, which remember it's the ball centered at f of x naught and radius epsilon, but then by definition again, it means the distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. Whoa! And, well, it doesn't quite conclude that it's continuous, but almost, because we now just need a delta, so simply, uh, now let delta be smaller than 1 over capital N, then, well, if the distance between x and x naught is less than delta, which is less than 1 over capital N, then the distance between x and x naught is less than uh, 1 over n, and therefore by what we've shown, we know that the distance between f of x, the absolute value of f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. Awesome! And now you're Berkeley bound, hopefully. Uh, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.